These things work really well, guys. Damn it. Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of my Wanted Features series for Stormworks Build and Rescue. We're going to talk about 5 or approximately 5 features which I would love to see implemented into Stormworks. And just in front of me or behind the camera is a warehouse full of stuff and things. Let's go check it out. Alright, so here is the first feature I'm thinking about today. And here we have a turbocharger and a supercharger, okay? Now, in a minute, I'm actually going to talk about how this feature is much bigger than I initially expected it to be. So first of all then, guys, let's have a look at the turbo here. Now, I've used the uh, the fluid pump to, <laughs> to represent the turbo here, and I've got a block here to represent the intercooler. Here's the exhaust, and I have an inlet for the turbo, which is, oh, it's this thing here, okay? So the way it works in basic terms is that the exhaust gases are exiting the engine through this pipe here they go straight into the turbo and spin it up really fast and so when that turbo is spinning fast enough a lot of air is going to be sucked in to the system through this inlet here and the exhaust gases after they've spun it up will be chucked out of the out of the engine out of the vehicle but when the fresh air has been drawn into the turbo it then gets kicked through this system here into this intercooler which cools down the gases because they've been really compressed so they're really hot and uh, they'll be more effective of course if they're nice and cool and they go straight into the engine after that get more power so that's the turbocharger idea and now we're going to talk about the supercharger which is actually a very similar kind of concept actually except that the uh, the supercharger doesn't run off exhaust gases it actually runs off uh, for example the engine directly the uh, the power of the engine here so i've got the supercharger connected to the power that goes straight over to the propeller, the drive shaft, I suppose you could say. Um, I guess some might be connected to engine belts, or you could even get like electric ones, I think, as well. But this one here is running straight off the engine power, okay? And again, we have, um, I think this would be an intercooler as well. I'm not an expert on these things, but we've got an intercooler here. So that after the gases have been brought in through the supercharger, they're cooled down and then put straight into the engine here. So essentially how it would work is the air goes in through these three holes here um, and then it would go straight down into the intercooler and then it would be piped through into the engine. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, when I was doing this, I thought, okay, it'd just be great to have turbos and superchargers in the game. But then I thought, well, if we're putting these things in, you know, how are they going to connect up to the engines properly? What if... Not only did we have these separate components, but we also had modular engines. So in that sense, each engine would be very, very customizable in terms of size and how many exhaust outlets there were and how many cooling pipes would be going in and out of it. We could have single cylinder engines or two cylinder engines, three, four, V6s, V8s, V12s, W16s. We could probably do anything with this game, actually. So I thought, yeah, not only could we have these two components here, or several components, if we have an intercooler and a turbocharger and a supercharger as well. But yeah, what if these things were actually fully, fully modular? I think that's probably, you know, I think that's quite a possibility for the future in this game. I actually find that idea really, really exciting. And just imagine the sort of possibilities we'd have. Like, no engine would be the same on the workshop. It'd be very, very interesting. Okay, guys? But that's the first feature, anyway. Hope you enjoyed that one. Now let's move on to the second feature. Right, here we go then. Now, this is one of my, my favourite things. Outboard motors, okay? Uh, here I've built two. I've got a small one and a large one. And some of you may have seen these before, actually, on my streams over on Twitch. Um, but first of all, let's talk about the small one here. Now this is actually, in the game, this is actually an electric outboard. So in here, there's a, a small electric motor, okay? And I've literally, that's all there is. <laughs> and then I've just, you know, padded it around with blocks and stuff. Um, and it goes directly into the prop here. But also, there is a pivot, so we can do steering as well. And in a minute, guys, I'll actually show you, because I've got the full boat over on the other side of the warehouse, and I'll show you that um, in action as well. But it's very, very simple, this idea. But the problem we have at the moment, guys, is of course that we can't actually fit a whole engine into a small outboard motor like this. I mean, we can have the electric motor, but if we want one that uses fuel, um, it's just not possible because they're way too big. You know, if we want to make a small outboard, for example, you'll see that one up there. I have actually got a big medium engine in that one. But, um, you know, many, many outboards are actually very, very small, even like 2 horsepower or 1.5 horsepower. 
and those things are really interesting so I'll talk about those in a minute. So the way these things actually work is let's say we have a two horsepower outboard motor okay very very small they'll be smaller than this so this might be 50 horsepower if it was real life but I'm going to talk about a two horsepower outboard motor at the moment. Um, they would actually have their own integral fuel tank in the in the motor itself just at the top here with a filler cap that you can obviously open and close. You actually steer them with a tiller by hand or which is a little stick that will shoot out here and then that has a twisty throttle grip on it as well or you can rig them up to a steering wheel of course on uh, mini ribs and stuff like that but they also have their own cooling system and as you'll see on the outboard motor over there in a minute i'll explain that but it will just be a little pipe that sticks out here and chucks water out the back they've also got an integrated propeller of course so you wouldn't even have to add all these extra things it would all be just one unit that you can just put on the back of a, a boat and it would just work right off the bat essentially now over here we've actually got a, a large outboard motor now this is really big if we were talking about real life you wouldn't really get anything quite that big um maybe two-thirds of the size of that but this is pretty huge if you compare it to me there you do get big outboards of course um but <laughs> that is very large and um here is the cooling so how they often work is that the the water we sucked in underneath down here and i've actually got um, an inlet which you can see the pipes for just under here there's a, a fluid port where the water the cold water will go in circle circulate through the engine and then be kicked out here um, and a nice stream of water out the back and in there is a medium engine it's got two exhausts if I just go into camera mode for a second you'll see here that I have two exhausts because the medium engine has two exhaust outlets um, here are the air intakes for the engine and down here is the steering mechanism so that is again like the small outboard motor over there here's the pivot for that one and this is exactly the same there's a pivot but it has to be extended out of course because it's, it's much bigger and then here we have now these two things here one is for fuel this is a hose connector for the fuel and this here is a hose for the cooling so basically when the water comes up here it will then go through the hose and up into the engine and then out through the fluid nozzle at the back okay and outboards like this in real life would of course have a separate fuel tank you wouldn't fill them up in the engine itself because all of that is engine and power essentially so they'd have separate fuel tanks within the boat or even within the hull of a rib for example now down here we've actually got some fins and normally outboards will have some kind of oval shaped surface or fins themselves so we could have even those integrated into it as well I think what's great about these is not only are they very easy to set up because they integrate the fuel and the cooling and the propellers and everything in one unit but it'd be great for beginners as well because they might want to use advanced vehicle mode um, but at the same time have options which are kind of a gap to bridge in between you know more complicated systems but behind me I have two examples using these two outboards on actual boats okay so let's go and have a look at those now and first of all we'll check out the small one because that's over here and it is literally the same as the one we saw over there but now we can show you it working so it's a very very simple design and essentially we have a pivot there which turns left and right of course steering the um, the outboard motor itself now I have had to limit this because if you have the steering too powerful or if it if it turns too far you can actually start to flip your boat over because the physics don't really understand it too well so do be careful if you do try to make these things guys but even on full lock here the boat should be fine if the if the pivots are limited now also you can see if I just give it a bit of throttle here it's fully electric this one and the propeller starts to move all integrated into one single motor ideally though you'd be able to have these as engines that use fuel as well but now let's go and have a look at the larger outboard I have just behind me over here now this is almost the same as the outboard that we saw over there but I have added a few changes so for example here where the cooling go the water goes in we've actually got uh, two pumps here just to improve the cooling and it does help actually uh, but I found that adding three pumps doesn't make any difference so two was the maximum in this particular setup here but apart from that it's all the same actually guys everything is the same so if we head into the cockpit of this boat now we can see how this mechanism works okay so it's the same mechanism here just on a larger scale and um, again the pivot has to be 
limited so the movement doesn't make the boat flip upside down when it's going along. But this engine of course, as I said earlier, it won't have its own fuel tank so the fuel tank is actually within the boat itself. But everything else works just fine. And actually even though this is a bit too large realistically speaking, um, the outboard here itself works really really well in the game and of course you could put the, the smaller engine in if you want to to make a smaller outboard but this has worked really well it's very very compact in here as you can see there's no gaps at all basically and there she is started up exhaust working fine of course it's going to blow up in a minute because I haven't got any water to cool it these things work really well guys damn it but I also just want to mention before we move on to the next feature that you can actually get electric outboard motors and you can get diesel outboard motors, okay? Now normally actually outboard motors are petrol, but you can get diesel ones. They're not very common and they're, they're actually really amazing and they've got turbos and stuff. They're really nice engines. And electric outboards, you can actually get very, very small ones that again, a bit like a two horsepower petrol outboard, you get a similar size or even smaller um, electric version and they're just super quiet and they're really really nice and actually you've been able to buy those things for decades now so you know and especially with electronic technology coming on these days it'd be quite nice to have some proper electric outboard motors in the game as well but let's move on to the next feature because that is actually quite relevant to these outboards here and the next feature is this <laughs> don't worry it's not just a tank it's a petrol tank guys because I think if outboard motors are put into the game, we definitely need to have petrol as well. Just because most outboards, and I, when I say most, I mean literally most of them, are petrol powered. And then if petrol was added, that would open up a whole new side of engine power to the game. But aside from having new engines which use petrol, I was thinking of something else that would be quite interesting to have in the game, right? Because as we know, petrol is explosive. So what if, you know, if you exposed a petrol tank here to a flame, or an exploded engine maybe these things would explode as well you know and that would be quite an interesting feature to have in the game more explosive because I mean we've already got explosions as, as we've just had over there with that engine but if this fuel tank was in close proximity to that outboard motor that would probably go off as well and man that would be quite interesting wouldn't it for missions I mean what if you had to actually transport large amounts of petrol and there was a risk of blowing up on the way you know, these sorts of missions would be that bit more interesting and scary at the same time. Um, so I thought that would be an extra bit of depth there to the game, which we haven't quite seen yet. But with that being done, let's move on to the fourth feature. Okay, now here we have gearboxes. But what's interesting to me about this is that, you know, now we've just got a very simple gearbox with two different ratios in. What if we had, first of all, uh, larger gearboxes so you could have say um, a five-speed gearbox a six-speed gearbox a seven-speed gearbox and so on I mean lorries and trucks have much more than that I know um, but what if we had the ability to customize the size of our gearbox so that would be the standard size and then if we added a third ratio we'd have a bit bigger fourth and fifth and so on I think that'd be a really interesting idea and it would save us placing down loads of different gearboxes we could just have one you know which makes much more sense but also guys what's possibly even more interesting than that is the ability to have an automatic gearbox so what you could do is just configure each box however big it is to change gear at any amount of rps or throttle level or any any kind of value that you set it for and you could change the ratios and essentially just have them very very customizable not only would that be just much easier and save a lot of time but it'd be much more welcoming for new players as well i think because you know i've tried making automatic gearboxes and there are some people out there who have made incredible automatic gearboxes and transmissions and all the rest of it and that is amazing but they are not easy to do and they take a long time to make but this system here, you know, even a beginner could at least have a go at this and probably succeed quite quickly, especially in comparison to what we have to do now, which is using the microcontrollers and, and all kinds of stuff. And as amazing as that is, um, because we have all the options, we can do it already, right? But it is so tricky to do right now and it's very time consuming as well. So hopefully that is an interesting idea, guys. And of course, we could even have like sequential gearboxes with, um, you know, up and down switches or flappy paddles on the steering wheel seat, for example, an extra feature there. Um, the possibilities are endless. But I think this 
uh, gearbox system in the game can be made much more in depth and easier at the same time. Okay guys, so with that done, now let's move on to the final feature here. Now it's not a big feature this, but exhaust pipes. So my idea here is that this, this black box is, you know, just the roof of a tractor for example, or a truck or something like that. But then here are the exhausts stacked up behind it. But often you see exhaust rain caps on the back and those are those things that, you know, when you press the throttle down, the little cap on the end of the exhaust will actually move up and down and that just stops rain and animals and other things from falling into the exhaust so they basically protect them but they look quite cool you know the way they move up and down it'd be a nice extra visual feature to the game if we had those but also what we could have guys is different exhaust systems which are maybe a bit more modular so we could have um, silencers we can have different sounds uh, we can have butterfly valves inside them for example um, and rain caps as I said so of course you know this is not really a big feature however if we had modular engines it would work really well in conjunction with that and also you know what's to say that changing the exhaust around wouldn't increase or decrease power uh, and sound levels you might want something to be really quiet or really loud for example that there'd just be a lot more options in that case so I thought that was quite an interesting idea to end on and also keeping it still relevant to all the other features that we've seen today but that is all the features that I've got for you today guys there are plenty more of these videos from this series on the way. If you've got any ideas or suggestions or opinions about uh, new features or old features or whatever, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. But until next time, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.